there is a 26 year old female who is complaining of menorrhagia and infertility. So it's a young female who is coming up with two major symptoms that is menorrhagia and an infertility. She undergoes an ultrasound and the examiner wants to know is everything normal? Do you think everything is normal or not? So for that you need to have an image dissection. <laughs> Again, when we are doing discuss, uh, dissecting and discussing the ultrasound images, I want you to follow an approach. First of all, I want you to identify the investigation that is going to be USG in these cases. Secondly, the type of the USG. And once you have decided whether it is a transabdominal or transvaginal scan, in the third section, I want you to look at an investigation or the USG, which is provided to you in an approach-based manner. What does an approach based manner mean? It means that we will be starting from one direction and will be going till the other direction until unless we see the image completely. The first question, is it an ultrasound? Obviously, examiner has told you that it's an ultrasound image. Second question, it is a transabdominal or a transvaginal scan? Again, do you see any urinary bladder? No. What is the first organ that you're seeing which is in contact with the screen? It is a uterus. So it is a transvaginal scan. You've answered so two questions so easily. Now comes the image dissection part. I want you to have a look at this particular image, which is the image which examiner has given you. And it's a normal image which I've kept for your reference on this side. So what is this showing? We can see that there, yes, there is a well, very well demarcated globular organ which can be seen. And this is nothing but the uterus. Look at the myometrium. Myometrium looks almost okay. Myometrium is again pure, homogeneous, almost hypoechoic. Now come on to endometrial cavity. Look at this endometrial cavity. How beautiful and slit like it is appearing. The two ribs of the endometrium being closed. On the other hand, here we can see something which is appearing white. What do we call white in sonography? Echogenic. So we can see that there is an echogenic lesion which is placed inside the endometrial cavity. So see, we made up one, one particular observation that the pathology is in the endometrium and there is an echogenic lesion in the endometrium. And this echogenic lesion on this particular image, now again I want you to identify this image for me. Since you can see a myriad of colors in this particular image, it is a color Doppler image. And what can we see in this color Doppler image? That they, this lesion is showing vascularity. There is color flow within this lesion. It means it's a vascular lesion which is showing color flow located within the endometrial cavity. What is this lesion which is located within the endometrium? Appears bright and shows color flow leading to menorrhagia and infertility, it is a classical hallmark of endometrial polyp. Now let's look at few of the other images of an endometrial polyp. So you can see again in this particular image, there is another echogenic lesion which is placed inside the endometrial cavity which is causing a widening of the endometrial cavity. I hope that you all of you can appreciate this in this particular image. And when I do a color Doppler scan, what I can see, I can see a vessel which is running from, its, from the posterior myometrium and extending within the lesion. This sign is called as the feeding vessel sign because a vessel is feeding this lesion. What is the other important relevance of this particular sign? Now this tells you that this lesion is probably pedunculated just like this and it is showing a color flow or its vascular supply is coming from the posterior myometrium. So what you can do? The, for the gynecologist it's very easy. She just has to open up the uterus from inside. That is do a hysteroscopy. Go on and clip this particular medical and the patient is going to be relieved of all the symptoms. You can take this polyp out. So this is the first case scenario in which we discovered that there is a polyp looks echogenic number one. It is located within the endometrium, number two. It is located inside the endometrium. And number three that we came to know is a very distinctive sign which is called as the feeding vessel sign which is associated with polyp. <clears throat> Coming on back, the question back again. So the answer in this case is nothing but a polyp. Now let's look at this particular image. Again, what is this image? It is a transvaginal sonogram. And what we can see, yes, there is a definite echogenic lesion which is placed inside the endometrial cavity. But what else can we see? We can see some black colored collection which is there in the endometrial cavity as well. So what is this? A black colored collection can nothing but be a fluid. So what is this particular investigation in which we have artificially put in fluid inside the endometrial cavity for the better visualization of the particular polyp or endometrial pathology? This is called as saline infusion hysterography. Why do we put a saline in? Because saline or fluid is going to look black and this, this particular polyp is going to be echogenic. So what we've done is we now produce color, contrasting colors. We've increased the contrast. So it will help in better assess, assessment of the lesion size as well as better detection of the lesion as well. So this is about saline infusion, hysterography or saline infusion, sono hysterography to be more specific because here we're using in the ultrasound waves. Now coming on to an important pitfall. 
Now, when we were discussing about the pathologies of the myometrium, I told you that there is one lesion which is myometrium based, which is a myometry lesion and will look hypo or black on all investigations like ultrasound it is going to look hypo and on MRI it is going to look hypo intense or black. What is this particular lesion? This lesion is nothing but a myoma. At that time, we also talked about that myomas can also be found in some mucosal locations. So, how to differentiate between endometrial polyp and a submucosal myoma? Look at this particular image. What we can see, again, it is a transvaginal scan. I hope all of you are going to agree with me. Now, what we see that the myometrium looks well demarcated, the uterus looks well demarcated. But what we see, the endometrial cavity has been broadened and there is some amount of fluid. So, probably it is some form of a saline infusion sonohistogram which is being done. And what we can see in the endometrial cavity that there is a very well demarcated spherical lesion which is located within the endometrial cavity. What is it looking like? It is looking hyper or hypo. I mean, it's echogenic or hypoechoic. It is definitely black or hypoechoic. So, do we see any feeding vessel sign? We don't see any feeding vessel sign in this particular case. So, this is nothing but a submucosal myoma. Remember, again, because it is located within the endometrial cavity, it can be associated with menorrhagia. It can be associated with infertility as well. Coming on to a next clinical scenario, there is a 29-year-old female who is presenting again with infertility. So, one thing is for sure when there is some pathology in the endometrium because the implantation has to occur in the endometrium. So, patients with endometrial pathology obviously complain of two important, uh, two major symptoms. One is infertility, the other one will be menorrhagia or abnormality in the uh, menstrual bleeding. Sometimes it can be uh, hypomenorrhea as well. So, she has a history of pulmonary tuberculosis. The examiner has given you a very classical hint of TB. A transvaginal sonogram is done. So, examiner has actually made your work much easier. He's given you everything. He's given you the name of the investigation. He's given you a clinical, pertinent clinical history. And now he wants to know something about it. So, first again, let's do what we always do. We'll dissect this particular image. Is it a TVS? Yes, the examiner has already told this is a transvaginal scan. Let's look at the myometrium. We'll follow the same approach. We'll go from one side and we'll end towards the other side. So, the myometrium, this uterus looks almost normal. The myometrium looks healthy. Again, it is grayish or black in color. But when we look in the endometrial cavity, see what is there? Some very bright or some very white structures which are filling the endometrial cavity and what they're doing. Look at the posterior aspect. When we talked about gallbladder calculi, when we talked about renal calculi, I think, I hope you remember that you, whenever there is calcium or when there is something like calcification, it will not allow sound waves to pass through them and as a result, there will be posterior acoustic shadowing. Since we can see posterior acoustic shadowing here as well, what it is likely to be? It is nothing but endometrial calcification and endometrial calcification is very commonly seen with tuberculosis and that is why it is a potential MCQ which can be asked. So it can be asked again as an image based question. And this is nothing but a typical endometrial calcification which is usually found in TB. Number one. Number two, it can also be found when the retained products of conception have become calcified. For your level, you just need to remember these two differentials. Again, the common way of presentation would be infertility.